All right, this is a Good Morning Kenya. My name is Mike Migwe, and we shift gears now and talk about technology. And today we are talking about integrating the artificial intelligence technology with the human workforce. And in studio with me to help me in this conversation is Arnold Ochieng, who is the General Manager of Workforce Africa. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Good morning to you. Now, the first questions uh, that come, may come to the minds of people when it comes to AI is, is it going to replace the human workforce 100%? Is it possible? Once again, thank you, Mike, and uh, good morning to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, AI is uh, it's a new form of technology that uh, comes with a bit of uh, some complexities around it and mm -hmm. some uncertainties around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, having said that, it's... it's uh, it's quite 50-50 around in terms of how it's going to, if it can replace fully the human workforce. Mm -hmm. But again, you, you have to understand that for AI to be even uh, effective enough, there has to be uh, the bit of a human uh, workforce or human uh, uh, assistance put into it for it to be quite effective the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So definitely there is no way that it can 100% take out the human workforce mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. And also when it comes to the implementation of the AI uh, technology within various industries, yeah. talk about why it is a challenge in terms of implementing it in terms of cost as opposed to using the human workforce so the challenges around first the challenges that come around with the, the artificial intelligence technology given that uh, the when the development came in or the the innovation came in uh, let's say around two or three years ago mm -hmm. uh, it, fir it first came in form of around text and uh, and then now it's been evolving into various aspects so there are, there's a bit of a kind of uh, a challenge in terms of how do you uh, integrate or how are you able now to, to improve on it going further. So definitely it's, it's going to take some bit of effort in terms of uh, how are you going to skill uh, or how are you going to train mm -hmm. somebody who is uh, supposed to be uh, uh, impro improving this system mm -hmm. in a way that it's able to grow the development of technology. And uh, like we've seen in the past uh, 20 or 30 years, technology evolves uh, in bits by bits. So uh, we are at a stage with AI that is it's still at the initial stages, but I, I foresee that with time there mm -hmm. is going to be a bit of development in terms of even how we are going to, 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 be, at, to be tackling it or how they're going to be addressing it in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. are, there, are there industries that are or professions that are going to be affected mostly by the introduction of AI? I'd say that uh, for the professions that uh, definitely will be affected, but not completely affected, because mm -hmm. uh, the reason uh, the, the more the the the, 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 the technology itself mm -hmm. it's spread across all kind of professions. Mm -hmm. So you find even in the art industry where that that that, that point that we used to have, uh, let's say uh, the cover models for. Uh, given ad adv advertisements that we used to have see on our billboards, right now we can see that most of those images can be AI generated. So yeah. if you look at even the, the some professions like uh, other professions, the, the most skilled professions, the, the finance bit, see yeah. that still AI also has uh, some effect on their on their on their profession. So definitely, it's not just limited to one. Uh, it's not just limited just to the create the creative industry mm -hmm. uh, kind of profession, but it's kind of spread of across all kind of professions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, still on uh, the implementation of uh, the AI systems, it requires a significant amount of money or investment. How can that be justified given the uncertainty that surrounds return on investment? Uh, one thing we need to agree that... Uh, the only permanent thing is change in everything that we are, we, we, we are going to be facing in the coming future. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the technology came in, uh, the, there are certain investments or there are certain kind of uh, inputs that are required that need to be, to be, to be implemented. Mm -hmm. You'll see for, for the case of uh, uh, some of, some of these uh, kind of technologies that are, that are bringing up, most organizations or most kind of platforms are trying to to see the best way to be more relevant or to be more creative mm -hmm. using that technology so definitely their their main agenda is to 
try and implement as much as possible mm -hmm. by getting uh, the best out of it. And um, the return on investment cannot be immediate as per se, mm -hmm. but ideally it's something that should be growing on the organization in a kind of a strategic manner and, mm -hmm. and how the, 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 the technology is evolving. So with the time, mm -hmm. there are certain aspects that will change and there's some they will tend a certain aspect that will kind of remain the same. So definitely, the ROI on it is not quite definite, but it's quite uh, put in a place where it's something that will be able to be worked on as organization grows. Okay. Now, when you talk about integrating the artificial intelligence technology with the human workforce, mm -hmm. is there a way that organizations can implement these systems and still to, to complement the human, the skills of the human workforce. How can organizations achieve this? Organizations can definitely achieve uh, both mm -hmm. of both worlds, given that uh, uh, we we have seen the evolution of the kind of skill sets around the technology space. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, most organizations are are are, are pushing their, their 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 workforce into upskilling and reskilling in terms of what the technological advancement requires, you'd find in the tech space that there are kind of there are some languages that are quite relevant to this kind of system. So definitely, as an organization is, is trying to implement this, their, their main obligation, their main duty is uh, how are they able to upskill the workforce that they currently have or mm -hmm. reskill the workforce that they currently have mm -hmm. to be able to be empowered enough to now control this kind of technology that the organization is implementing. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the, the organization is kind of growing in the, tech, in, the, in the tech advancement space, but on the other hand, the workforce is also being uh, upskilled and also being empowered in, in such a way that they're still able to retain their jobs and they're still able to power and drive this technology that the, the organization is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it, it also brings about the aspect of communication because when, let's say in an organization, people hear of AI, mm -hmm. they think about job re replacement. Is it a case, are AI technologies coming to augment or complement the jobs that are existing right now? The technology itself is... Uh, in the way it has been built, it has been built to complement what we currently have in the in the current workforce. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that the technology itself was developed by a human skill. Mm -hmm. There's a human kind of uh, brain or creativity that came up with that sort of technology. Mm -hmm. So now the the main purpose of it now is now how does it increase business and operations efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. Then now, as it increases business operation and efficiency, they, there has to be a creative mind behind it, or there has to be a certain workforce, human workforce, mm -hmm. behind it that drives exactly what it needs to implement or whatever it needs to grow into. So, at the end of the day, it might sound like a conflicting two people uh, trying to conflict for something, trying to fight for something, mm -hmm. one one opportunity. However, mm -hmm. the AI needs the human creativity mm -hmm. than the human creativity needs the AI. So does it mean even with the introduction of AI, it's also going to create some jobs in the future for, 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 for the humans? Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, definitely the, the, the evolution of the AI is going to create more jobs mm -hmm. yeah, that is able now to even now advance now the technology to where it's supposed to be. Uh, there's, a, there's a recent uh, uh, kind of technology that was uh, invented by the, uh, the, the CEO of... Uh, X, which is now Twitter, that is yes. the, the neurology kind of technology. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of kind of fascinating how things are evolving. However, when now this most of these things uh, change and evolve, mm -hmm. it's going to create more opportunities on how everyone is now able to now to accommodate it, even now to use mm -hmm. uh, the kind of technology that has a, uh, will be evolved at that given time. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, a, a, a person would argue that the introduction of AI brings about concerns of eroding human creativity and analytical skills. Is that going to happen? I doubt that, I doubt that. I, I think the human mind or the human creativity is quite, uh, in, in quite creative in such a way that they, uh, it's, they're, it's always trying to think of the next big thing or the next advancement of that technology. Mm -hmm. this, someone introduced this technology mm -hmm. and then now there's a bit of a, there's a group now that 
is now trying to even make it better. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's also, the, the, they'll come up with another group that also now to try even modify it and even make it far much better. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think with, with time, even the human creativity will, will be advanced so much that it will, the, the AI advancement will highly depend on the human creativity. So there will be even chances of working in the development of such systems and also maintenance? True, true. Yes. Definitely. Now, how can organizations now um, balance between efficiency? Because the introduction of AI mm -hmm. is meant to, as they say, enhance productivity and efficiency. How can this be leveraged without encroaching on the unique capabilities of the human workforce? Organizations have to first of all establish exactly what, uh, what is the direction they want to take in terms of technology. If it involves uh, uh, the, the artificial intelligence technology, mm -hmm. then what is the direction that they, they need to, 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 to decide on where they want to go. Mm -hmm. With that, they have to decide in terms of what kind of team do they want to set up mm -hmm. or what kind of team do they want to have in that organization mm -hmm. and how, they, how do they want to build a team around that uh, kind of uh, technological advancement for the organization. So ideally the organization's purpose should now be trying to, to, to create a team mm -hmm. or trying to skill a team mm -hmm. around that strategic kind of development of that kind of tech space that they want to achieve mm -hmm. in a given strategic uh, period that they they need to 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 get to a certain point now let's talk about upskilling and reskilling we are living in a digital age and uh, sometimes the two have become very crucial mm -hmm. so why is it Rele important for organizations to uh, identify relevant skills uh, and prioritize them and invest in them so that uh, they can enhance sustainability even in times where their are operations being carried out by the AI and others carried out by the human workforce. As an organization, they, there's something that you need to come up with which is called a, a training needs analysis. So. Uh, in each and every kind of reviews that uh, an organization does to the workforce that they have, mm -hmm. a training needs analysis is, is, uh, is approached in such a way that the, the organization determines what kind of skills are required for certain roles and what kind of skills are required for certain positions. Mm -hmm. So this informs the organizations on how they need to approach kind of uh, reskilling and upskilling. Mm -hmm. And upskilling is important in a way that you might have the right talent in the office or in the workforce, but there, there's a certain skill gap that they require for them to be able to contribute to the next level of uh, the organization. Mm -hmm. You might have the, the best talent again, but now you need to approach the kind of contribution in a certain, uh, in a certain drive mm -hmm. that requires the US organization to be able to be reskilling them in mm -hmm. that drive towards that given mm -hmm. uh, kind of contribution. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why I think most organizations, even as they are approaching the AI mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, direction, training is a part, it should be a very, it should be a key part in every organization. So as they're doing the reviews, as they're doing the assessment, mm -hmm. the training needs analysis needs to be part of the key objectives for every review and, uh, and assessments. Does it have to point back to the uh, uh, expertise, level of expertise of the workforce or it should be done, it should be inclusive regardless of their level of, of expertise or background in terms of specialization? It's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. There has to be a focus on both given that uh, you, you need to, uh, to determine exactly where does your workforce lie. Yeah. Uh, there are certain skills that as an organization need to determine that um, do I have the right people for this kind of skills? If they're not, then it means you need to uh, try and get people mm -hmm. who are, are aligned towards that skill. And also if they, they, you have the right uh, people who are, uh, are geared towards the uh, direction of that skill, they need to see a way that you're able now to upskill this kind of set of uh, workforce. So definitely it's a little bit a mix of both and uh, for all the organizations. So, it's for them to now determine what's the approach they're going to take mm -hmm. in ensure that they're evaluating their skill set yeah. and they're evaluating the kind of workforce that they have uh, directly that is how, how is it relevant to mm -hmm. the strategic position that the organization is taking. Uh, now also how can organizations engage the, 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 their human resource, stakeholders and also uh, customers and regulators to address 
any societal concern that might arise from the introduction of the AI systems? We, for organizations need to focus more on around the engagement sessions with uh, both stakeholders. When I say engagement sessions, I mean how are they able to communicate the same if it's within the, 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 the workforce that they're currently handling. There has to be a certain structure and approach mm -hmm. in the way that uh, communication is done, in the way that they are integrated into the evolving nature of the kind of mm -hmm. uh, advancement that they, or the strategic direction the organization is taking. Mm -hmm. If it's with the, the clients or the excuse me, the customers, then again another approach needs to be to be to be established with the organization. Mm -hmm. So they have to ensure that they clearly define the, the roadmap that they're taking, mm -hmm. and there has to be clear communication in such a way that everything has uh, a clear direction, everything has a clear objective, mm -hmm. and there's a clear um, uh, opportunity that should be communicated for each party to be able to understand that the reason why this strategic position has been taken is because of one, two, and three. Yes. Of course, there is going to be um, a cultural shift in terms of how now work is done in various industries. Uh, are there strategies that can be implemented to ensure there is openness, transparency, and a continuous address to a continuous learning, uh, even, even as companies try to address the resistance to the introduction of the AI systems? Culture, culture shift is, uh, is inevitable in any given uh, uh, advancement of any given technology that arises in the market. Mm -hmm. this, that being said, they, it needs to be approached in a, in a certain manner because if we remember mm -hmm. the, the, the reason past before even the, the, the evolve, evolving of the, the computers and the, all that, mm -hmm. there was that issue, people used to use the typewriters mm -hmm. and that kind of age where uh, introduction of computers there was mm -hmm. a bit of a culture shift around that. So definitely, even with this uh, uh, change in, uh, uh, in the technological space, mm -hmm. it has to be approached in, an, in, an, in a consultative and, and engagement manner. You have to understand that mm -hmm. the people who are c contributing to the organizational growth are currently mm -hmm. uh, inclined towards a, a certain culture. So uh, shifting the culture mm -hmm. might be a bit drastic to them. So they ha it has to be approached in a way that they are able to understand exactly the why it's happening yes. and they are able to be engaged in exactly what they are, they are required to do in order for them to fit into the in the culture that is required yes yeah. uh, are there ethical frameworks for organizations to adhere to especially when it comes to ai development implementation and deployment uh, because it also relates to matters regarding privacy and job displacements. Are there fr uh, uh, frameworks that organizations need to adhere to in, in, in such instances? As, as the technology advances, then it causes a risk in terms of uh, exposure and privacy uh, invasion. So ideally, in every given activity or in any given engagement, there has to be that bit of ethical kind of control when it comes now to this AI bit that uh, at times it might involve uh, uh, accessing data and mm -hmm. accessing uh, private information, mm -hmm. an organization has to be very open about what exactly they intend to do with the information they are collecting. Mm -hmm. If there is a certain uh, a legal binding uh, document that they, they need to share, that has to be very open to everyone to know that uh, uh, this X and Y company are mm -hmm. going to use your data mm -hmm. and before even um, a lot of reviews you are allowed to, to actually sign it off. So the bit of around, uh, there has to be that bit of uh, control and uh, that bit of kind of being open and being transparent in any dealings that, uh, that it will involve with the information or with activities mm -hmm. that the technology will be, will be using. Yes. Uh, uh, are there metrics to, to measure productivity and efficiency, especially when it comes to the introduction of uh, the AI systems. Are there, are there uh, ways through which the companies can measure the, these two aspects? Productivity and efficiency. Productivity and efficiency are, are, are activities that uh, require objectivity in terms mm -hmm. of measuring. Yes. And uh, with this kind of technology, it, it means when you're approaching uh, productivity and efficiency, you shouldn't approach it 
in the manner that you are approaching the same yes. kind of activities. Uh, we'll, we'll take a, a case example of uh, a given job that required you to be in your, your, your station of work uh, mm -hmm. from nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, that was probably the measure of productivity and efficiency for that kind of, uh, of a position. But if there's a, a technology that requires mm -hmm. you to do it and it can get done mm -hmm. in terms of hours, mm -hmm. less hours or even let's say less than three hours then, mm -hmm. the productivity and uh, efficiency measure should be structured in such a way that is relevant to the kind of contribution that is being done with that kind of set of technology. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, talk about, because the development of um, AI and its evolution, there are ethical considerations, of course, but how can organizations ensure that um, even before we come to the ethical consideration, there's the aspect of training. Is this training going to be regular or is it a one-time thing? Because we are dealing with a system that is almost self-aware. Um, self dealing with such systems, is it important for uh, uh, organizations to ensure there is regular training or it's a one-off thing? One thing about technology is technology changes in a span of a minute. So uh, training cannot be a one-off for such kind of uh, advancement or such kind of technology. Mm -hmm. Training has to be on a regular basis, whether it's quarterly yeah. or uh, semi-annually. Yes. That has to be, again, considered by the fact that uh, what are the current developments that are around that specific uh, uh, technology that you, you require as an organization. Mm -hmm. If the organization focuses on a, on a, physic, on a specific aspect, then it has to be very uh, alert in terms of what are the changes that are taking part yeah. in that uh, kind of uh, technology. So they have to make the changes and in the training every time so that everyone mm -hmm. is uh, up to par with what's required by the adult investment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, automating uh, jobs around various companies, of course, comes with its own set of challenges. Are there things that you can point out that uh, it will, in terms of challenges, it will be a challenge, even if that th 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 there is that implementation of uh, the AI, we still, there, there are still maybe shortcomings in terms of whatever they are looking for in terms of productivity and efficiency? Definitely, the, with every advancement, there's challenges. and. Uh, the first challenge is basically the resistance from the current uh, uh, culture that is already set. Mm -hmm. You'd find that, uh, yes, the organization might take steps to to ensure that there's proper engagement in terms of the, of the shift. However, mm -hmm. the current culture might be a bit uh, resistant to the change given that they, 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 they are in, uh, kind of afraid or uh, uh, seeing it as a, a risk to their jobs mm -hmm. and in that case it, it, it needs to be uh, uh, slowed in or it needs to be eased in mm -hmm. with specific structures and specific kind of milestones that need to be achieved. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, some of these challenges around the development and the advancement, mm -hmm. it comes with again skilling mm -hmm. of the team that you currently have. There might be a, a difficulty in terms of how do you handle certain uh, kind of uh, 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 renovations for that set of technology. So the skilling bit, uh, some of the organizations might, might be a bit behind, but they need to be kind of uh, ready enough to ensure that by the time they are getting the technology, they are ready to invest in the skill, they are ready to invest in the training, so that in any case of any change, mm -hmm. they're not left behind, and they're not, they don't have these challenges of where they are still struggling to, to make those advances or to make those changes. Mm -hmm. uh, as that now, why should a person focus more on reskilling and upskilling? Why should why is it important in this day and age? It is important for everyone to focus on upskilling and reskilling, given that we are living we are living in a in an evolving world where things edu I said learning and education is uh, free in mm -hmm. a way in such that uh, some of these skills currently are available online. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be focused solely on uh, the kind of set uh, uh, job or opportunities. Mm -hmm. We are also living in a world where 
uh, jobs have evolved mm -hmm. in terms of a hybrid working environment, in terms of getting a kind of uh, short-term projects or short-term gigs. So we are living in a world where it's, you are able to get more opportunity mm -hmm. if you are able to, to, to dedicate some of your time to reskilling or upskilling yourself. So it's, it's more for your benefit rather than for you to be, than, rather than for the market's benefit. So it's more advantageous to your end. So it's about aligning yourself with the changing times. Yeah, true. Uh, now, as we come to a close of uh, this uh, talk, why is it that um, I'd love to know, are we going to achieve a 100% synergy between working with AI and human, combining the two, human workforce and the AI systems? Definitely, we, la we will achieve the 100% synergy, mm -hmm. given that... Uh, there are structures that are in place that to ensure that things are moving on in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, Organisations currently are trying to re realign themselves and uh, realign their strategies towards that kind of technology. Mm -hmm. So it might take time, uh, maybe a few more years to come, but with time there will be a hundred percent synergy in terms of mm -hmm. everyone is uh, aligned towards what's the contribution for the AI to the workforce mm -hmm. and what's the workforce contribution to the AI and then how does the organization blend mm -hmm. both aspects into one and, and try and drive the organizational goal. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Thank you. Karibu sana and Thank you. We will be happy to host you again. Well, uh, that is Arnold Ocheng, who is the general manager of Workforce Africa, talking to us about integrating the AI technologies with the human workforce. This is where we uh, wrap matters this segment. My name is Mike. Maybe we don't go too far. Vivian will be back with more. Good morning.